a very good afternoon to all her brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Today is Sunday, the 9th October 2022. So we will be following the new book, 75th Lessons of the Six Patriots Platform Sutta, with essential summary on cultivation. So this is also a transcript from the recording of the talk delivered by me in the year 2018, 27 of May. Mm. Okay, as usual, we will be having our pre-puja. Huh? Let us compose our mind, develop the faith, sadha, virya, then mindfully we shall commence the puja chanting. Namo Pensu Sajya Moni for. Namo Pensu Sajya Moni for. Namo Pensu Sajya Moni for. Namo Kwan Sing Pusa. Namo Kwan Sing Pusa. Namo Kwan Sing Pusa. Namo Ami Tofo. Namo Ami Tofo. Namo Ami Tofo. Namo Mila Fo. Namo Mila Fo. Namo Mila Fo. Namo Pusian Pusa. Namo Pusian Pusa. Namo Pusian Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Tisang Wang Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Namo Fo Pusa. Arahang Sama Sam Buto Bagawa Budang Bagawantang Abiwa Demi Suakato Bagawata Damo Damang Namasami Supati pano bakawato sao kasango sang hang namami na mo atasa bakawato arahato sama sambudasa na mo atasa bakawato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gajami Dhammang Saranang Gajami Sanghang Saranang Gajami the TMP Badang Saranang Gachami, the TMP Damang Saranang Gachami, the TMP Sanghang Saranang Gachami, the TMP Badang Saranang Gachami, the TMP Damang Saranang Gachami. The TMP Sanghang Saranang Gachami Anati Pata Eramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Yami Adina Dana Eramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Yami Kami Susmichachara Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Yami Musawada Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Yami Sura Miraya Majapama Datana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhi Yami Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Okay, let us pay respect to Pajan. Vidang Pajani. Tamang Pajani. 
สังหังปเจมิโอเคเดี๋ยวแค่ไปเสร็จนะการบิดตันทุกปีสิกส์ของเดอชั้นทิ้งบุกเรา do the invocation to the devas invocation to the devas in this universe in their entirety let the deities or devas come here let them hear the good teachings of the king of sages which is heaven and released nibbana This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. Samanta chakawale su atra gachan tu devata. สัตดามังมุนีราชาสสุนันตุสักโมกกดังดัมมัสวนันคาโลอายังบาดันตาดัมมัสวนันคาโลอายังบาดันตาดัมมัสวนันคาโลอายังบาดันตา Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa อิติเปโสบะกาวะอะระหังสัมมาสัมพุทโธวิจาจารณสัมปันโนสุกัตโตโลกะวิดูอโนเตโรปุริสะดัมมะสาร์ติสัตตาเดวะมโนสานังบุตโตบะกาวะติสวัสดีทุกคนวันนี้ผมสันดิตโกอาคาลิโกเอหิปัสโกโอปานัยโกปัจจัตังเวดิตาบุวิโนหิติสุภาติปานโนบัคควัตุสาวกสังโกปุญญปฏิปันโนบะกาวะโตสาวกสังโกยาญาปฏิปันโนบะกาวะโตสาวกสังโกสามีจิปฏิปันโนบะกาวะโตสาวกสังโกยาดีดังจัตารีปุริสโยกานิอัตตาปุริสโพกาลาเอสะบะกาวะโตสาวกสังโกอาหุเนโยปาหุเนโยตะเคเนโยอัญจลิคารานิโยอโนตรังปุญญังเกตังโลกะสัตติสาดุสาดุ Sadhu. Okay, we shall now continue from this new book, the seventy-fifth lesson of the six patriarchs, back from Sutta. <coughs> so this book is based on a transcript from the recording. Of the seventy-fifth lesson of the six page of platform suitor class uh, data, twenty-seven May, twenty eighteen, uh, conducted by me, uh, Wu Ping Jing Sir, uh, section eleven. Ah, uh. uh, sorry, yeah, road eleven, section eight. Ah, uh. uh, section eleven, road eight. Uh. Sorry, darling, yeah. Uh. Okay. We will read to you the content. 
under content, but there is a preface where we introduce the topic. Then there is acknowledgement of those who have helped out. Then only the content proper of this 75th lesson or the 6B3 platform suit. Huh? Then you will start with Puja, which you have done. Then they also have their Dharma and Sutra sharing by me. Then 3.2.1 is chapter 10 of the Six Patriarch Platform Sutta, where there is this final instruction huh? with the subheading opposite and duality. Then 3.2.2 is how to transcend duality. Then 3.2.3 .3 is the phone number two, comprising mundane and supramundane cultivation. Then 3.3, .3, meditation and meditation reporting. 3.3.1, .3 daily mindfulness and understanding cultivation. Then 3.4, Lessons, outline, short note, prepare after the class. Mm -hmm. Okay, we go to uh, the bio data I just read eh, for those who are new, who may not know my bio data. So this is it. Bertio graduated from the University of Malaya in civil engineering in the year 1979. He has been a spiritual practitioner a meditator since 1971, since his retirement in 2001 from his engineering career, he has been sharing his understanding and experiences with those who are keen in their search for true peace, happiness and liberation from birth and death and our mental suffering so that it can be a blessing to all of humanity. We are becoming a more virtuous, nobler, and wiser human being. He gives them a talk and holds meditation classes and retreats and weekly meditation classes at various meditation centers, Buddhist society, and places they invited him. For more detail of virtues, the activity, and his guidership grouping, please log in to his Dharma website yeah? http colon slash slash brother deal.com yeah? okay preface it is brother sincere wish that Dharma friends spiritual practitioners seekers of truth and cultivators of the way will be able to make use of the enclosed transcript notes to develop a better understanding of the Buddha Dharma as taught by the Buddha so that they may progress along the path of Dhamma to become more virtuous, nobler and wiser human beings that can be a blessing to all of humanity and the world. As these notes were mostly compiled based on the direct transcript from the recording of the 75th lesson of this Six Patriot Platform Sutta class dated 27 May 2018. The text is aligned as closely as possible to the colloquial speech in the talk. However, some editorial amendment has been made to the text without distracting from the essence of the talk. With this, it is hoped that readers can accordingly adjust themselves to understand. Sorry adjust themselves to better understand its true meaning and intent. A good way to do this is to listen to the recording first before reading the transcript book. To listen to the recording or audio file, you may log on to bratio.com website under repository of Dhamma material or just Google Bratio's Kayan Meters or repos repository of Dhamma material to view them or alternatively to download from the below mp3 audio link. Yeah. Okay, then we go to the acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. 
is the donor sincere intention, then this Dhamma transcript notes be given free to those who are interested and have the affinity to receive them. I would like to take this opportunity to thank and rejoice in the generosity and wholesomeness of all those Dhamma friends of Kayamita who have donated and helped out in the transcription, typing, typesetting, formatting, proofreading, etc. to make this free distribution of Dhamma Dana possible. Special thanks should be accorded to Sister Parmasuri and Sister Alicia, who had taken the initiative to develop the draft transcript for my subsequent editing, thereby enabling this Dhamma transcript book to be printed. By the power of all this wholesomeness, may all beings be well and happy, free from all mental and physical suffering and dangers. And may there be love, peace and joy within their hearts. And may it also pay the way for there to be causes and conditions for all the my friends who have donated or help out in one way or another to realize their good and noble wishes or aspiration as soon as possible. If not always. Okay, we go into the Sutra proper. First is the Puja, huh? the usual pre Puja chanting of the Maya tradition salutation, followed by the Teva tradition salutation, huh? which we have done. Then the taking of the three refuges, and the renewal of the five precepts was done. For detail, please do listen to the recording or refer to our. Lesson 2 and 3 is transcript book. Mm. The full version is uh, printed there. 3.2 Dhamma and Sutra Sharing by Brother Dio. So I started by addressing the audience. I said, okay, you all can be seated. Then maintain some form of attention. We will now commence the six patriarch. Sutta class. Today's lesson is lesson 75. Very good. We should be ending soon. We were at page 382, the final chapter. Okay, the sutra say, said, external insentient, insentient things have five pairs of opposite. Some gent someone gently reminded Bertil to recite the verse for opening the sutta. Then I say, oh yeah, thank you, my sister Ibi. Yeah. We should return to page one to recite the verse for opening the sutta. Then there is this verse for opening a typical Mahayana Sutta. This version is Master Shenhua's version, my refuge teacher. The unsurpassed, profound, and wonderful Dhamma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of aeons. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to phantom the Tathagata's true meaning. So this opening verse is very beautiful. Okay. Then chapter 10, final instruction, opposites and duality. And then in the main text is on page 382. Then we start by reading the sutra part. The sutra say external insentient things have five pairs of opposite. What are they? Heaven and earth is the first pair. Yeah? Then the sun and the moon, light and darkness, yin and yang, and the water and fire element. This is typical Mandarin culture. They always talk about Tian Di. Yeah? Yes. Tian is the heavens, the T is the heaven and earth. Heaven is what they call as Tien. That is why the heavenly rhyme 
is also called Tian Fa Jian. Then we have the earthly rhyme, like earthbound devas within our planet. So they call it heaven and earth. And they always treat the sun and the moon as a pair, and in the same manner, light and darkness, yim and yang, and water and fire. So these are the five pairs of opposite. Then the Sutta said, in speaking of monks of Dhamma, one should delineate 12 opposite. So this one is monks of Dhamma. <laughs> Normal speech and Dhamma is one. Existent and non-existent is two. Form and formlessness is the third one. Then the mark and the unmark, the fourth. Then the presence of outflow and the lack of outflow. Form and emptiness, motion and stillness, clarity and stability, the common and the holy, membership in the Sangha and the membership in the ladies, OH and you, largeness and smallness. So this is the way they actually categorize the monks of Dhamma. Hmm. Then the Sutta said, from that self nature, eh, 19 pairs of opposite arise. So this is the way they subdivide. Length and shortness, deviance and orthodoxy, foolishness and wisdom, stupidity and intelligence, confusion and Samadhi, kindness and cruelty, morality and immorality, straightness and crookedness, reality and unreality, danger and safety, affliction and bogey, permanence and impermanence, compassion and harm, joy and anger, generosity and stinginess, advance and retreat production and extinction, the Dhamma body and the form body, the transformation body and the reward body. The master said, you can understand and use this total 36 pairs of opposite. You can connect yourself with the Dhammas of all the suttas and avoid extremes, whether coming or going. When you act from your self-nature in speaking with others, you are separated from external monks while in the midst of them and separate from inner emptiness while in the midst of emptiness. If you are attached to monks, you will add to your wrong views. And if you are grasping at emptiness, you will increase your ignorance. So this is the sutra part, the classification held by them. Now we can go on to the commentaries eh, by Master Xuan Ho. Opposite here means mutually dependent and mutually opposed. 19 opposite arise as a function of the true suchness, self-nature. For example, if there was no long, there would be no short. Long is the opposite of short, and short is the opposite of long. Long and short are relative terms, and between them is the middle way. Kindness bestows happiness, and is the opposite of cruelty. Morality and immorality are opposite. Morality is the practice of all good actions and the absence of all evil. Compassion pulls living beings out of suffering and is the opposite of harmfulness. Generosity means giving. If you can give, you are not stingy. The Dhamma body pervades all places and is the opposite of the form body. So this is just a short summary by Master Shen Ho. The actual sutta is much more detailed. But as far as the Dhamma is concerned, this is just an expression based on the Mandarin language and the Chinese culture at that time. These are the expressions that are commonly used by the commentary says. From the self-nature, we can come up with 19 pairs of opposite. 
But as we all know, these are dualities. Duality is limitless. It is not limited to 19 pairs or opposite or any number of pairs, like the first five pairs or opposite for external insentient things. They always talk about the first opposite of TNT, even in the game of Haikao. They also have TNT pair of cards, which are the two biggest cards. Then I don't know if there is this Mandarin word Kun. Then respond on the floor, yes. Uh, this Kun is my last name. <laughs> so they say, heaven is Tian, uh, written on the whiteboard as Tian. Is this correct? And respond on the floor, yes. Then T, the deal, wrote T on the whiteboard. Is this correct? And they say this word pointing to Kun on the whiteboard. It's the highest on earth. That's why they got the word chin kun. You can go and check it out. It seems this one came from the I Ching or the Tong Su. So on earth, this one is the highest. I think somebody read it to me and I asked him what the word is. And he said, this is kun. Then I said, my last name is also Kun. Like you all say, Chien Kun. What is the meaning of Chien Kun? They always use the two words Chien Kun, meaning heaven and earth, Yi Men Yang, and the universe. As far as I know, this word Kun is the highest on earth. It means on earth, he is the one. So this is Tian Di. That is why since young, when I heard this word, it's like my nature understand these two words very deeply. There is heaven and there is earth. And the, of course, the sun and the moon, light and darkness, yin and yang. Yin and yang is from the Tao teaching. Do you know Tao? The teachings of Lao Tzu. Yin and yang is infinite in numbers not limited to any numbers. So what I want you to understand is just what the fifth patriarch told winning, all Dhamma arises from the self nature. So it is not limited to just 19 pair. Master Shenhua didn't explain all this. He just summarized it. So what you need to understand as far as my nature is concerned, you don't have to worry so much about the description of the opposite. You only need to understand duality. Hmm. This English word duality is very good. Is there an equivalent Mandarin word? They normally use this word, fen piercing, meaning the mind that discriminates, that discriminates. But duality is a better word or a more appropriate good word. Yes, the more accurate equivalent word for duality is Xiang Dui Fa. Xiang Dui Fa. So if you can remember this Dhamma, it is enough. Duality is a very important concept in Buddhism. Yeah, according to Master Huining, the self nature is originally empty. So there was nothing. Or Benlai, Wu Yu, just as per his poem. That self nature is Benlai, Wu Yu. Or originally, there is nothing. Because this is the oneness nature, the source of all things. From there, everything arise. How amazing, Hui Ning said. All dhammas arise from this self nature. And this self nature originally, there was nothing. 
Sun Xiu didn't understand this part. Sun Xiu was trapped in the mind, the mundane mind. He thought that was the true mind. That is not the true mind. That is the condition arising mundane mind or thinking mind. So that is the reason why when they say Ben Lai, we heard to words and I know. That is originally there was nothing. Therefore, where can the dust align? So this does come from duality. The concept of duality. But because since you didn't understand the concept of duality, to him there is only wholesome and unwholesome Dhamma or pure and impure states of mind. So to him, thus is like impure or defilement. When you create this duality of thus and non thus then you have problem already. Once impure arises, the opposite will also arise. Do you understand? If it is not pure, then its opposite, which is impure, will arise. So what happened when Sun Xiu created this? He was trapped in his own creation. That was how winning counter it by saying, originally there is nothing. How can the dust align? If you don't create duality, there is no such thing as pure and impure. There is no such thing as dust and non-dust. So why do you create it? And after you have created it, you try to meditate, we are using the mundane mind to do away with it, the dust. And there is a reason why since you said, polish until it shine, so that no dust can align. Can you do that? You can't, isn't it? The moment you create this duality, the opposite will immediately arise or manifest. Then you try to attach to the pure, to the perfect, to the wholesome. Then you try to reject whatever that is the opposite, impure, defilements and unwholesome, etc. So what are you doing? You are fighting your own creation. Do you understand? And cultivation is not done in this manner. If you cultivate this way or this manner, you will not awaken. Because this is the mundane mind. The mundane mind creates and then it tries to cease its own creation. How can you cease your own creation? To do that, the thought must die. Do you understand? And the thought refuses to die because it is egoic. So the thought that you use refuses to die. That is why when Hui Ning realized this, he could counter Sun Xiu's poem. The fifth patriarch also knew. That's the reason why he told Sun Xiu, you have reached the gate of enlightenment, but you didn't know how to go in. Which means he has developed just the normal cultivation of the sainthood way. He doesn't know that he has to cease all this. He hasn't realized the sound nature, which was, which will arise naturally once the Monday mind ceases, because it is the unborn, always there. Ah. The moment you don't create duality and you cease all this movement, then that true mind or true nature manifests. That that true mind or true nature is all the time there. So that's how since you are caught in duality, in not understanding all this, that is why the free patriarch gave him another chance to come back with another poem to show that he deserved to receive the insignia, ampoule and the robe from the free patriarch. But since you at that time was very tense. And he couldn't come out with another poem because of that. The condition was such that Huining would be the one who would inherit the fifth patriarchship. Because from the poem, the fifth patriarch knew he already had a condition to receive this patriarchship. But he just wanted to give Sun Xiu a chance. That was before Huining. Huining wrote the counter poem in reply. For the next one or two days, Sun Xiu couldn't come out 
with any poem. Then when Hui Ling came to know about the poem several days later, he came out and asked someone to write his poem for him. The fifth page immediately knew the implication, and that was why he immediately rubbed the poem, rubbed off the poem and said, Now mind, this one also hasn't really seen the true nature. Then after that, he walked to the kitchen area where Hui Ling was pounding the rice. When he saw Hui Ling with the pedestal on his waist, because he was small in size and lacked the weight. So he had put on a pedestal rock tied to his waist and used it to help in the pounding. The fifth patron knew winning was gifted and he had his past cultivation since he could understand all this. That was why he knocked on the pedestal. He was pounding the rice three times. Before he did that, he actually had a short conversation with winning. He said, isn't it madness to sacrifice your life all the way to come just to seek Dhamma? Then Huyen Heng replied, I seek nothing less than Samasambuddha Hood. Then the fifth page said, Is the pounded rice ready? To this Huyen Heng replied, Ready long ago, waiting to be safe only. The fifth page knew immediately, and he gave the sign for Huyen Heng to see him that night on the third watch, sunken. That was how Huyning went to see the fifth patriarch, and when he heard the Diamond Sutta, he, become, he became thoroughly awakened. He only lacked the understanding of how to use the mundane mind. Do you know why Huyning had this problem? Because he was born without a mundane mind. That was the reason why he didn't understand how normal human beings with the deluded Monday might become entangled. So when he was born <coughs> without a Monday mind, he didn't understand what is because his mind, his nature was already like that. So when the Fee Patriot expounded to him the Diamond Sutra, and when he reached the part which I had shared with you all before, he said, This mind, which is the mundane mind, the five aggregates of forming mind is comically conditional for you to use. You have to learn how to use it and yet not to be deceived by it. The moment he heard that, he came to complete enlightenment. This means he completely understood what these things are. The reason why he was able to understand the first part, which is the unconditioned, was because his mind was Without the mundane mind, all this one since birth. So he already understood the unconditioned part. And what he liked was the conditioned world's part regarding the mundane mind. There was a reason why he had, why he, when he came to this part, he straight away understood that this mundane mind that came with the physical body of his, even though it was the supramundane mind, because he was born without the mundane mind, he still need to use it, and yet not deluded by it. Yet this one is dependent originating, condition arising, cause of phenomena, not real, and impermanent. That's why it is anichang. If you attach and cling, it will lead to suffering. And because it's impermanent, it can never be a permanent unchanging entity where you can grasp on to, cling on to, hold on to, and say, this is me. This is I. And therefore, all these are mine. Or oh, this is me. This is I. All these are mine. So straight away, he came to great awakening. That is why this part is very important. And when Huyning came to this understanding, he was completely transformed and he knew how to use them. But the fifth patriarch knew the causes and conditions were such that he could not come out straight away as yet because that form and mind of his was at risk of being destroyed. People were come after him. 
there was this mundane condition because the people at that time expected Sensio to be the only one eligible for the patriarchship. Do you remember after the fifth patriarch told them, don't waste time on tinted murders. Strive on to come out with a verse to show me that your cultivation has reached a level of understanding so that I can pass on the patriarchship to whoever who can come out with the appropriate verse. Then all of a sudden, oh sorry, then all of them decided nobody should write it or write the verse except since you, the chief disciple of the fifth patriarch. That was the reason why they expected him to be the successor or receiver of the patriarchship. The fifth patriarch knew very well the danger Huinan was in for, and that was the reason why he straightway told Huinan he must leave immediately. So in the middle of the night, he sent him off. The story continued. When they were at the boat and wanted to steer off, the fifth patriarch said, I will steer you so that you can go. He said, no, after you have transmitted the teaching to me, now it's my turn to steer you. That's why he steered a small boat and was able to leave the way place immediately. The fifth patriarch then came back to his monastery. The next morning only things started to happen. I think when they realized that winning was already not around, and then there was this rumor that the patriarchship has been transmitted. All this came about because of Huining's second poem. So because of jealousy, a lot of sensuous followers chased after Huining. They tried to track him down to bring back the insania of the rope and the bar, uh, arms bow. So that sensu can be officially proclaimed to be the sixth patriarch. Do you all realize at that time, they even went against the decision of the fifth patriarchs by going out of winning. So civilization can become such. The part on Bohidama's life in China was also very interesting too. Previously, I sent out a video clip, a short version for sharing. Do you all remember? It was from a cinema show and it was a very interesting show. It shows how Bohidama transmitted the Dhamma to China, to the East, and how he actually introduced the Mahayana teaching. He said to Hui Ke, the second patriarch, that this tradition of passing down this rope and arms bow shall continue only until the sixth patriarch. After the sixth patriarch, there is no need for the transmission. Well, by then, this teaching, the Mahayana teaching, would have taken roots and flourished. So that was how all this happened. In this Bohidama series, towards the end, it was very interesting. At first, the emperor invited Bohidama. And so Bohidama came to China. In the early years of China's civilization, they had expected the great Dhamma master or ambassador from India to be very famous, to come with dignitaries and large following. But when they saw Bohidama came alone without any follower, without any grand and thronage, the abbot and all those temple monks that were instructed by the emperor to receive him looked down upon him. They had some misunderstanding, but Bohidama was not affected. Then one day, they decided to have a three-day and three-night session of silent sitting meditation. The abbot and the three of his senior monks went in. The Bohidama was around, so he also went in. Then they made this ruling. They were supposed to cultivate the silent meditation so no one should speak. Whoever speak will be disqualified and had to get help. So what happened was they meditated for quite a while until midnight or middle of the night. Then there were very severe wind movement. 
howling sound and rain, suddenly the window started to move. So as we all know, Chinese usually have this fear during the night. So with the wind howling sound and the windows moving, one of the disciples developed fear and spoke, what are those sounds? And all oh, the oil lamps light is gone. Then the other man laughed and said, ha, huh, you are not supposed to talk, so you broke the rule. The other man said, I'm the only one that didn't talk. Then the abbot said, you also broke the rule. So everyone broke the rule except Bohidama. Well, only Bohidama didn't say anything. Then there was this place where, where they used to cover the teacup, the Chinese teacup. He used the place where cover to make some grinding sound on the table. Then when they heard him doing that, they asked Bohidama, what are you doing? Then Bohidama asked back, what are you doing? They then answered, we are sitting in silence and meditation to realize Buddhahood. He then replied, I am polishing this place where to make it into a mirror. They laughed at him, we are saying, you must be crazy. This is a place where how can it become a mirror? Then Bohidama replied, if polishing the glaze where cannot make it into a mirror, then how can sitting in Zen without understanding make you a Buddha? What I am trying to do is to give you an analogy so that you all can understand. If what I am doing with this glaze where is impossible to accomplish, meaning it's foolish to do. But I see you all doing the same foolish thing while sitting in Zen without understanding. They cannot understand him. Then Bratio said, you all must listen to this and you will learn a lot. They then asked Bohidama, how then can we become Buddhas? Uh, this part I think you have to listen attentively. Huh? Bohidama replied, one must start by understanding that the Buddha is the embodiment of his great perfection of wisdom and virtue, and not how he sits in his posture and movement, but how he sits, how he walks and meditates. The Buddha has no fixed posture. And Zen is not just about sitting in silence. Do you think by sitting the way now, sitting this way without making any noise can make you enlightened. He said enlightenment is not about the form Dhamma, not about sitting, not about not talking, and all those gullible so-called Zen practices of form Dhamma. Enlightenment is an understanding and awakening. A wisdom that is to be realized by the wise is for themselves and that the self-nature or true nature is to be awakened to via the direct scene with the silent mind. So you all only know you have to sit in meditation, but you all don't know why you sit and how to meditate. So how can you realize the truth and awaken to the way? All the monks were stunned by his reply. Do you know what they asked him back? What do you mean? Everybody sit. If we don't sit in Zen, then how can we awaken to the way? Bodhidharma told the monk, you must start from basic. So this word basic is very important. Start from basic. What does it mean? Do you know what the monk's response was? The monk thought, it means to start as a samanera, doing all those basic preliminary practices. So they asked Bohidama, what do you mean by starting from basic? We are all senior monks. We have already gone through all those preliminary training and practices. That's why we finally, that is why finally we only need to see it. Bohidama replied, you have to start from basic, meaning start from the mind. Or in Mandarin, Sing Wei Kenpen. And you must 
understand what this mind is all about, the two aspects of mind, so that you can understand clearly who you are and what you are. You can't even understand that you have a cell nature and everything arises from the cell nature. We are created by the mundane mind, which is dependent originating and condition arising. Then you are being superficial in your cultivation and you are wasting your time without wholesomeness. Sorry, whether wholesomeness, unwholesomeness, evil or non-evil, etc., they all arise from there. Oh, sorry, they all arise from here. This is basic understanding, means from the Monday mind. The basic understanding of the self-nature and the Monday mind is also the reason why Sakyamuni Buddha said, mind is the forerunner of all things. Mind is chief. Where mind arises, everything arises. Hence, good and bad, whether wholesome or unwholesome, etc., they all arise via the Monday mind's creation. And Bodhidharma said, if this basic teaching also you don't understand, then how can you meditate? Do you follow? This basic understanding teaches that your mind creates duality of good and bad, wholesome and unwholesome, etc. And that is why the Buddha said, mind is a forerunner of all things. And they are all, including the Monday mind, Oh, sorry, I read again. Eh? Mind is the forerunner of all things. And they all, including the mundane mind, arise from the self-nature. And the mundane mind is a source of good and bad, right and wrong, wholesome and unwholesome, etc. It is understanding, which is called kunpan, or basic understanding, you also don't have. Then you are being superficial in your cultivation and you are all wasting your time. You can go and sit for umpteen years, yet you can never awaken. That's why you have to understand that you have a nature which is independent of thought. Thought is dependent on originating condition arising, and from it, everything comes to be. This is basic understanding. That is the reason why Bodhidharma teaching Bodhidharma's teaching and Huynang's teaching are the same. Both take you directly to the true, true mind. Do you understand? Then from there, you can meditate and everything will become easy. Ah. After that, the monks started to respect him. They started to listen to him. Then Bodhidharma started to teach them. And even the abbot started to develop the real cultivation and understanding. And towards the end, just before Bohidama decided to go back to India, he gathered them. <clears throat> I can't remember how many of them, I forgot. Was it 10 or 6? Before Bohidama left for India, he called them together and sat down with them. According to that video, I was, if I'm not wrong, there were four or five of them. So he asked each and every one of them what they have learned. After my passing away, you all should go, each in different direction to teach. You all should know what you are supposed to teach and how to teach. So I want to hear from each and every one of you what you have learned from me thus far. So one by one, they started to say something. You can go and read the sutta and watch the video. It is a very interesting video. Ah. The first monk said something very simple regarding non-attachment to words and concept of Dhamma. Bhoi Dhamma said, you only learn superficial Dhamma, which means like the superficial or the surface of the skin. Very superficial. Then the next monk said something concerning contentment, born of the direct sea, or awakening. To this second man, Bodhidharma said, you have received the flesh. The third man went deeper. He spoke about impermanence. Everything is unreal. The four elements, including space, are unreal and empty, and everything 
is dependent originating and that the entire six sense of consciousness are empty and unreal. He talks about the unreality of form and mind, touching on the deeper and more profound dhamma. To this, he says, you have received the Buddha or something to the effect. And there was another one. This one talk about empty nature of all things. Everything is impermanent, everything is unreal, and everything is dependent on anything. Very complete, he said. You are not that. I don't remember what analogy he used, but he said, you have received, oh sorry, you have received beyond the bones. Yeah. So you received quite a bit. The last one, he said, was Hui Ke. The second period, the future second period, whom he passed the insignia rope and the arms pole to. Before he passed it to him, he asked Waker, What have you learned? Do you know what Waker did? You all don't know what he did? He didn't do anything. He just got out and paid his respect to Bohidamma. Then after that, everybody looked around in disbelief. It's like he didn't learn anything. Then Bodhidharma said, that is it, that is it. We have the realization that one has learned and awakened to cannot be expressed. Do you understand? Whatever that can be spoken or expressed is just Dhamma. Not that thing. Ah, you have received everything, my spiritual understanding. I will pass you the rope and insignia. That is why. Don't be talkative. Don't talk too much. The one who knows or understands does not speak or talk. The one who speaks or talk does not know. Because the best way is just to express your gratitude, your pain, your respect. That's it. Or no words can express it. The moment he kneeled in front of Bodhidharma for three days and three nights to request Dhamma, Quaker already had the result. Do you all know who this Quaker is? Yes, he was the one who chopped off one of his arm. That has comic problem. But because of that, sorry, but before that, do you know who he was? If I'm not wrong, he was the one that was very violent and very hot tempered. Do you remember him? He wagged two teeth out of Bohidama's mouth. He almost died because the king of hell, Yama, wanted to see him. Then he asked, what have I done wrong? And he was told, you have done terrible wrong. You wake that guy, according to King Yama. There is a fully enlightened being around. But you are teaching false dhamma and you go, and you are so violent, he said. Cannot be, tell me, who is the one? Then they told him, the one you wake. Then he asked for permission. Give me some time. I will come back to you because I need to see him first. That's why he chased out the Bodhidharma and finally caught up with him. Finally, he managed to become the Bodhidharma's disciple and received the second patriarchship from him. After that, he was given the name Huika, meaning able wisdom. So you look at the way the Zen series of story from Bodhidharma onwards until the sixth patriarch all beautifully described in the sutta. When Huika received the insignia, the bud and the bow, Bodhidharma told him that this rope and bow shall stop at the sixth patriarch. Just now I had related this to all of you already. According to Bodhidharma, by then, 200 years later, the Dhamma, the Maya teaching would have flourished after the appearance of the six patriarchs teaching. So there is no need to pass it on. After which all subsequent patriarchship 
will not have the robe and the insignia. We visited most of the six patriarchs' way place last year during our last year's spiritual trip to China. And that trip was most beautiful and it was I meant to be. We went to his birthplace and all the other six, oh sorry, all the other places he visited, one of which was where he spent his 16 years of hiding among the hunters and all those related story. When he finally came out, he was able to have the condition to be recognized and was then put in charge of that temple. What was the name of that temple? The ever saw him and because of the flag and wind incident, then they invited him to teach. Then from there, he was given the position to actually transmit the Dhamma. <coughs> that monastery was very famous. Forgot his name already. What's the name? Ah, yes. Guan Si. So that place was beautiful. Do you remember? We went in there, and the first hall we visited was Pa Hai and Sun Xiu. So, oh, sorry, Sun Hui. Uh, Sun Hui is the youngest disciple. Pa Hai is the chief disciple. Then there was a drum, like the Tibetan one, which is very big, where we turn it around. And whatever it is, sorry, but whatever it is, all these were very beautiful, and we managed to visit them, visit almost all the sacred places. And we even managed to meet up with some very good monks too. Then one of the monks took us to the place where the relics are. He helped lead us to chant like what you all did, Lao for. As we mindfully walk around the relics, he took us to do the Rao for three rounds. The monk was very good. So the condition was beautiful. That was why it was like meant to be. The tree was very wholesome and very beautiful. So all these are conditioned to let you understand. I just want to repeat this part so that you all may recall that beautiful spiritual trip. Apart from rejoicing, the basic understanding for cultivation must be there too. He said, if this basic understanding also you don't understand, then you are wasting your time, really. Instead of talking about thought-based meditation and all those things because this self-nature, you have to really understand it. Each and every living being has it because all beings are connected to this self-nature. From here, everything arises. Then the basic teaching as per Sakyamuni, Buddha's proclamation, mind is the forerunner of all things, mind is she, where mind arises, everything arises. And all dhamma arise from the self-nature, all dhammas, all duality and things, including the phenomenal world of consciousness. And whatever that arise, sorry, and whatever that arises is dependent originating condition arising, following nature's law within the existential world. Whereas this cell nature is the unconditioned, is the source of all things. It's already there originally, we are, it was never born. Whatever that is never born will never get old, never get sick and die. So when you understand this, then you can start the cultivation. That's why basic teaching must start with mind. Which means you have to understand the mundane mind and the true mind. The mundane mind needs to be trained. You need the spiritual faculties and the silent mind to cultivate because you need to return to realize this self-nature. If you cannot return to this self-nature, you cannot awaken, you cannot understand all this. That is the reason why mindfulness is very important and it can enable one to return to the true mind to realize the self-nature. 
When you are mindful, aware, without thought, there is no mundane creation, no heedless thinking, no sankara activity, no thought process. Then everything becomes clear. Then the stillness, the silence, the tranquility, the clarity allows you to see things as they are. And that nature can awaken to the three universal characteristics of nature. It is only when this nature awakens, the wisdom come along. And this wisdom needs to be connected to the form and mind to liberate it. The five aggregates of form and mind before it is enlightened. There is no wisdom connected to it as yet. This wisdom is very important. And this is the one that came about only via the direct scene. Not until this wisdom is connected to this form of mind. This form of mind will be deluded. But the moment wisdom is connected, then you can say this is the enlightenment. Sorry, this one is enlightened. But this one is not you. So the whole of cultivation is just to realize the self-nature or the true mind or the silent mind. Then from there, the direct seeing awakens the form of mind. So this wisdom can only come about via the direct seeing, meaning seeing things as they are. So this is the awakening. When the awakening comes about, the wisdom is developed. And this wisdom will be connected to the form of mind that realizes it. So this one, we can say, is enlightened. The five aggregates of form and mind with the wisdom connected. Without the wisdom connected, this one is deluded. This one will become an ordinary Buddha jhana. The moment it's connected, this one becomes an Arya. So whether it's an Arya or not an Arya depends on whether wisdom is connected or not. This one is an aria because it is connected, pointing to the whiteboard drawing. Otherwise, this one is just an ordinary being or a worldly Buddhichana. But this one is not you because this one is impermanent, completely conditional for you to come to this existential world. That is why you must know how to use it as a vehicle and a tool for you to live life. This one is subject to karma. That's why you must have the right duty. One of the four qualities of an enlightened disciple or the Buddha, the Aryan Sangha, of good conduct, of upright conduct, of wise conduct. And the last one is of dutiful conduct. But this form of mind is subject to karma. That's why you have your duty. You cannot simply do things or act. Because this form of mind is subject to nature's law of karma. And when you understand this, you understand the whole of life, the whole of cultivation. So a lot of Buddhists or cultivators, they can't progress because they don't understand this aspect of the Buddha Dharma. So this part about the form of mind and its duality, the meaning is very deep which Master Shen Hua didn't manage to explain and share. So now with this understanding, maybe we can move on. Do you have any question regarding this about the self-nature? Anybody has any question? Is it clear now? Yes. Oh, so then there is a question, I think. Pastor Maida Sister, I tell you. Okay, we stop here. Page 24. Okay. I'll mark this page. We will stop here, page 24. Then we will off the light. Huh? And you can have your um, uh, 45 minutes of awareness based meditation. Huh? Okay. Just relax body and mind completely. Huh? Then maintain awareness for as long as you can, eh? then silent everything. Don't try to know, don't try to do anything. Then allow the Monday mind to settle down so that your awareness nature can stabilize. Eh? Then use it to meditate, okay?
Okay, you can slowly, mindfully come out of meditation. And we will continue with our next session, which is meditation reporting, followed by whatever question you may have. And you can also share on the mind daily life based on what you have gone through how to apply this teaching to help you understand life, live life, develop order, wisdom to enable you to overcome all of life situation or problem that one encounters. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can, yeah. Can hear um, good. good evening, brother dear, Mrs. Dio, yeah, and all the Kamitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, PG, for nominating me. Mm, yeah. Um, I saw. I don't know. I saw quite blank. Not. No, no, my. Do you have any, uh, like sharing or question to ask, or maybe report any of the meditation that you have gone through? Today's topic. You were able to follow, eh? Yeah, yeah. Today's topic is a very good revision. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. yes. Very good revision. You're right, yes. Mm, yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry to this. Yeah, you, you talk about the um how the six patriarch got his um patriarchship from Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, this. <laughs> oh, then sorry. later on, I, I... the story on Bohitama, how to do the cultivation. Uh, mm. We have like... to start from basic, means, sing way can burn, means, the basic of mind, you have to understand. Then only you can go into the true teaching. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, it is. I think I think it's very important. I mean, for to at least I mean, like to understand before we. Like no. I'm, I used to think that you know we just need to sit, at yeah. least you know. Right. I, yeah, actually, I want to know like um like normally when we started um like meditation, then we normally request us to sit. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. To um settle our mind to right, uh, yes. to make sure that our mind is like not in this um you no know, like mundane mind we think here and there everything ah, so we, right, we might need right. to settle it. Yes. So but but it after settling it we also need to understand the Buddha Dharma so that we are able to go into deeper. So the, so like today um both um Bodhidharma he talk about um you cannot meditate first. Uh, I, I remember we used yeah. to and um to, to to learn uh Buddhism that we, we should not meditate so we should understand uh, yeah. the, the Dharma. Uh -huh. but, that is what he advised the Zen monk, the so-called Buddhist monk at that time, because he saw what they are doing is wasting their time because by doing all those things, he realized they cannot awaken. They are wasting their time because they are doing superficial meditation or superficial dhamma. They are not really cultivating the true dhamma. <clears throat> so the aspect is very important. Do you want to like go through the thing again? Why you just now mentioned? Eh? Uh, why is it that in the past, uh, the early days especially, uh, mm -hmm. you were supposed to sit, uh, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. everybody was told to sit. Yeah. Then, the, why is sitting of no use when you don't understand? That's why the Zen analogy, sometimes they say, if sitting alone can make you enlightened, mm -hmm. then the frog should be enlightened, you know, and the frog will sit all the time. <laughs> uh, then there are other analogy yeah? because like you went through just now, the obvious like 
uh, very popularly accepted ways to see it so that your mind can settle down. But um, yeah. that meditation. So what Mohidaw I give as example is very good because when they went in, you remember the monk got the rules. He said, whoever break the silence yeah, has to go out. Because yeah. you already lost your ability to have the silence because you're supposed to meditate without thought, without thinking, without chattering, without anything. But they don't understand that. They only understand what normal people understand. You must not speak. You must not make noise. Yeah. Then if you can do that, they think they are meditating. So sitting, like what normally people go through at most meditation centers, they see the sign. They interpret that as noble silence. Actually, they put their second finger straight up yeah, against their mouth. Then they call that noble silence. That is not noble silence. That is don't talk. Don't create any unnecessary sound yeah, or noise or speak. So what actually is noble silence? Noble silence means to develop the silent mind that is without any chattering, without any movement inside. So the mundane mind that is not heedlessly lost in thought, that is not verbalizing inside, not chattering, that is the complete silent within, means Noble silent. Yeah. But most people cannot. Because when you ask them to see it, it's like restricting their movement to be natural because they don't know how to relax. So the first support for awareness based meditation is to relax. Relax into what? Every mind state that arises. Like at the retreat, I think Man Yuan realized he missed that step. Because she missed that step, she realized she cannot settle down. But then later on, when she was able to do that, then she can settle down. That's why relaxation is very important. Relax into every mindset, then let things be. Then the thinking mind, the mundane mind, will slow down and settle down and develop the stillness in it. Means the mundane mind will return to its natural state before the stirring so that you can realize the true mind, the silent mind. That is what meditation is all about. But this has not been taught. Most of the time, they say sit. Then they give you one instruction to meditate. And what are instructions? A series of instructions to do things. And this is not meditation. So all this method, technique, or whatever skillful means that they give to you as meditation object or instruction to meditate, they are all only skillful means yeah, to train the mind, to anchor the mind, so that you are not lost in thought. <clears throat> they know if you just sit without doing anything, the thought is very active. And most people cannot settle down because the mental hindrances are there. The spiritual faculties are not there. And because of that, the mental hindrance hinders the mind from entering the meditative state. So all this, they don't understand. <clears throat> the basis for cultivation also they don't understand. They only actually know one thing. They must seek more calm mind, more peaceful mind. That's why they are actually searching for peace, calmness. So like your case, you mentioned last time, you see this because you want to let your mind settle down. So to let your mind settle down, you know how to see it with the relaxation and maintain awareness. Then you will settle down like our for support then it can be lying down meditation or sitting or standing or whatever posture, you can settle down. 
the mind can just settle down. But you must have the understanding to fall support, or at least the first three, relax into every mind state that arise. Then maintain awareness for as long as you can. Miss. Don't think, just let the awareness arise and let the thinking slow down until the Monday mind stops. Then you can have the ability to realize the true mind before the stirring, before the movement. But most people cannot do that. So because of that heedless thinking, what they do is they come up with methods and techniques or thought-based meditation uh, to verbalize, through chanting, through focusing, concentration, or object of meditation to actually fix the mind so that this mind does not wander off and become heedless so that they are not lost in thought. Yeah. That's why they will come up with all the various methods and techniques to do. Some use the verbalization of Buddha, 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 or chanting, or Samarahang, Samarahang, and all those things. And some, they use the rising and falling as an object of meditation, the abdomen, the rise and fall, and all. Then some use the anapanasati, the breathing. Then some use the dynamic hand movement and all those things. But by doing this repetitively, you become like able to settle down, become more calm, more peaceful. Then some do walking, some do bowing, uh, then some do tai chi, stretching or whatever. So all these are skillful means to anchor the mind so that the mind settle down, then train the mind to be with the object of meditation so that it does not wander off and create the heedless thinking. So that is what they are doing. But basically, what is meditation? Never thought. That's why we have to start from basic understanding. We are according to the Buddha. Our mind is the forerunner of all things. Mind is she. When mind arises, all things arise. Means all of the mental hindrance, the duality, the delusion, one of the evils of greed, hatred, and delusion, they arise because you lack right view. You lack right understanding. Then when you know all this, you will have to ask yourself, what is the basis of life, basis of living, basis of action? That's why the Buddha came out with the right view. He came to this realization that we are all living beings. And all living beings, they follow this law of karma. That's why he said we are all born of our karma, heir to our karma, conditioned and supported by our karma. And we are what we are because of our karma. So when we understand that this law plays such a great role in our life, from this right view, he straight away advises us to take care of karma. So that is how we start. Then how do we take care of karma, I say? You have to follow his advice to avoid all evil, to go purify the mind. And that is what meditation is all about. How to avoid all evil? That's why he said, keep the precepts. When you break the precept, it constitutes major evils. Uh, then the second part is cultivate wholesomeness. You avoid all evil, do good or cultivate wholesomeness. Means after you keep your precept, you're supposed to train yourself in the morality aspect. Means you not only keep your precept, you develop the ennoblers. Then you develop all the virtue, the wholesomeness, the goodness, all the beautiful mind state. That's why you cultivate noble informa, the first few power factor, especially right view leading to right thought. Thought that are free of the evil of greed, hatred, and delusion. 
then right thought, condition, right speech, right action, right life, then the four right effort. That's how you develop the cultivation of wholesomeness. Then the last part, to purify the mind, we start with the four right effort to purify the thought. Then after that, we move into mindfulness to be aware, to be mindful. That's where meditation starts. So mindfulness, samasati, is the training of the mind to be aware, not to be lost in thought, not to develop the heedless thinking. To understand that there are two minds. One is the mundane mind that is subject to karma. And that one you need to train so that it avoid all evil, develop only right thought, to cultivate wholesomeness, to avoid evil, so that karmic negativity can be avoided. Then finally, the third training is to meditate, to insight in the phenomena, to awaken, to develop the wisdom, to understand clearly the universal characteristics of anichang dukkang nenatnata, to the direct sea, through the silent mind that awakened to all phenomena. Yeah, all phenomena exhibit all these characteristics. So the final part, which is purification of mind, which is meditation, is to be aware. So you have to start with training your mind to be aware. If this basic understanding also you don't have, then we cannot meditate. That's why the whole of meditation is a cultivation. We have to cultivate the mind through developing mindfulness to be aware of our mental intention, to understand the essential Dhamma, what constitutes evil, so that when we are aware of the evil roots that can condition us into negativity or mind state, then we need to abandon the four right effort first. Then the meditative way is the third way, means awareness, just silent away. Then the fourth way is to trace the origination factor, then retrospectively reversing it. So all this requires mindfulness, awareness. So you cannot develop mindfulness or awareness, then stabilize it to realize your true mind, your awareness nature then you cannot even keep your precepts. Because without mindfulness, you cannot keep your precepts. Then you cannot cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path. Because without mindfulness, you are like deluded, blind. You can't see anything. You cannot develop the wisdom. But with mindfulness, you can see clearly. You can be aware of what is going on in life, in existence, then you can come to the understanding of who you are, what you are, what this form and mind is all about, then what that true mind is all about, and how it can awaken an insight to phenomena to develop the understanding. Then you can see clearly how the form and mind, through delusion, through ignorance, stir the mind, develop duality, develop confusion, heedlessness. And how the evil root brings about evil activity of body, speech, and mind. And how karma arises. So all this understanding is what meditation is all about. So Bodhidharma told them, if you don't go in and understand all this, means he used the Mandarin word very good. Sing Wei Kun Pen. You must start with basic understanding of mind. What is this mind? Well, as a human being, we have a form of mind, a physical body, and a mind trapped inside. That's how we start. Then this mind is very important, you see. That's why in the teaching, the basic essential Dhamma, the Buddha always talk about the mundane mind. Yeah, this one, he said, 
is the forerunner of all things. My Ishi, when my arise, all things arise. Uh, then in the Mahayana way, they mention this Mahayana Mandarin word. Is everything arise from the mind, created by the mind. Sing thousand. So it is the same as Dhammapada verse 1 and 2 that Sakyamuni Buddha taught. So when you understand that, then you understand the first part, the mundane mind. Then when you meditate, you realize when this mundane mind ceases, there is another nature within. And that one, you have to develop the understanding through cultivating, through learning from somebody who understands, like Sakyamuni Buddha, how he teach, how the essential Dhamma bring about that understanding. That's why he teach mindfulness. Sati. He never teach thinking. Yeah. Of course, under noble eightfold power, there is right view leading to right thought. That's it. <clears throat> but when it comes to purification of mind, it's all about sati. The four foundation of mindfulness is all mindfulness of the four foundation. And that is the only way for the overcoming of sorrow and suffering, for reaching the right path, for the realization of the true Dhamma to awaken. So all this understanding, when it falls into place, then we will know how to start our meditation. That's why he gave the analogy. He said, why are you all sitting? And this monk, they don't understand because they say they have gone to the preliminaries. As a Samanera, they have done all the work. So now it's meditation. See, silent. So the key understanding, they have to sit, they have to sign up. But during the Buddha's time, as I have explained 2,000 years ago, you hardly see any people sitting on the chair. Most people are poor. You go to people's house, I remember in the 50s and the 60s. <clears throat> My house hardly have any chair. And most of us sit on the floor. We play on the floor. We do a lot of things on the floor. And later only, my father starts to yeah, buy table and all those things. Because in the early days, you can't even find a carpenter to actually produce a table. You got money also, you cannot buy. Then later on, there were goods where you can buy or people sell and will import from other places and all those things. So that's how we slowly develop the progress to have table, to have chair. And I remember that time, our whole family, there was only one table where everything we do there. We have our breakfast there, our lunch, our dinner, then whatever uh, activity, we do that. Uh, if like want to make noodles or what, we use that table. Study also use that table. My father, Chinese say when he attend to patient, he also used that table. So one table, whole family, you know, nine of us, brother and sister, share one table. How to study? We don't have a study room, you know. There is only one room where my mother stay with the nine of us. And then my grandmother stay another room. Then whoever the children that she like, she will let her, let the children stay with her. Then my father, they got no place to sleep. The what they call Pan Po Chow. You call one. That one. Uh, in English it's called. The, 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 you sleep outside on the folded one with the cloth in the center when you open up and you sleep on. Fold, the foldable bed, uh, the cloth type one. Uh, I, I sleep on that a lot. When I grew up also, as we reached Standard six, we had to walk out and stay outside also. Uh, so it, we call that fun po uh, uh, Or in Hokkien is uh, well, really, I also don't know how to call it. So this was the condition at that time. So 
things is such. So the emphasis is different because at that time, food and shelter is top priority. Then only come education. Of course, our Chinese culture, we have this emphasis on education, which is very good. But to really excel in education, you must have proper condition and environment. When you don't even have a proper place for people to study, what you expect. Uh, and most people, because of family circumstances, remember, my family, we were more fortunate. Well, my father shoulder the response very easy. To look for money is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to study uh, and graduate and became somebody useful. And to look for money for education, such expenses, my father says, his responsibility. So he took them on. So we are very good. So when it comes to cultivating the Buddha Dharma, it's the same. Uh, when we understand uh, all this basic, clear understanding, then we know how to move. We know how to develop ourselves. Then we don't know how to actually come out from the poverty cycle and break free. That's why cultivating the Buddha Dharma is like breaking free from the cycle of perfect death. Break ignorance, liberate our mind, develop clear understanding of life so that we know how to live life, we understand life. Then we can be a blessing to all then we can actually solve our own life problems and all the things. So basically, this Dhamma sharing is very important. And there is a video on it. I think they make it into a uh, six page here. Uh, like the life history of six uh, Patria, uh, Master Hui Neng, Six Patria, Liu Zhu Hui Neng. So that show actually developed all this, what they call important Dhamma sharing, Dhamma understanding. That's why Bohi Dhamma, after he was able to break their delusion, then started teaching them. Because before that, they looked down upon Rohidama. You remember, he came, not within the expectation. They thought he very famous. He must have a grand and thronish. No, he came alone, and he didn't even have a proper shoe, it seems, at that time. Uh, so all these were the condition at that time. But as he stayed in the monastery, where he was on the invitation of the emperor, uh, then all these things manifest. Then yeah. because of his parami, he was able to actually come out with the condition to teach them. Then he also taught them the exercise part, the Kung Fu part, and all that's why it developed into the Saolin Si and martial art and all those things. And they also had the Buddhist temple having their Buddhist activity. Yeah. Uh, they are chanting and all those things. Then the Buddhist teaching covers a wide aspect of life and is mainly developing wisdom, understanding. Then from there, they can actually become a very useful tools uh, to transform the ordinary people, the population at that time, uh, the citizen of the country, uh, then of course, that complement society, uh, because this understanding was lacking at that time. Uh, but of course, China has its own culture. They have Confucianism, they have Lao Tzu, Taoism, and all the various type of uh, uh, great thinkers teaching at that time. Uh, 
similarly the West, the West also have their religion and all those things. That's how all this actually uh, comes about. Then of course, the Middle East and other area like India, they have their own religion, their own uh, philosopher, thinkers and all those things. Then you have the various style of uh, teachings, philosophers, philosophies, uh, even the Western one, they have their teachings. Uh, then some are assimilated into the education, uh, education field. Uh, means, uh, they were taught as basic educate, education topics uh, or faculties. Uh, that's why they have this what they call religious study, comparative religion and all those things. Then they have theology and peristyle. So basically, when you want to study any teaching or you want to like develop the understanding of what truth is to realize enlightenment and awakening, it depends on which field you go in, which is more conducive to the individual. And everyone, basically, I realize all religion claim to have the truth, points towards the truth. And most of them start that by teaching people the basic teaching, avoiding all evil, doing good, having love and compassion. Then, of course, to follow the message of whatever that is wholesome, good, uh, whatever the teacher teach. Then from there, religion starts to flourish. Uh, but when I look at the world religion, I try to do a study. Then I realize what is unique about our Buddhist teaching is we not only have the basic teaching of avoiding all evil, doing good, having love, compassion, virtue, and all those things. But there is a part of the meditative understanding, which is mindfulness, awareness, state. And that one is missing in most religion. Most religion don't have that aspect of training. Then the depth of understanding of mind is actually lacking in most other religion, but of course there are some also have their meditative understanding too, uh, like the Hindu teaching and many other type of Asian, the Eastern side type of teaching, they have their own meditation too. So this is what we need to be exposed to, uh, to develop the understanding. So for your case, tell me, hopefully with this understanding, uh, now you start to develop the understanding of why meditation is not just to be gullible about sitting. If you just sit without understanding, you are wasting your time. Like Bhutama gave them the example, the grace where he was rubbing against the table. The table could be made of uh, maybe a rock or whatever. <laughs> then he said, I want to make it into a mirror. So they laugh at him. He said, no matter how you grind, the glazeware is still the glazeware. It can never be a mirror. Yeah. There's a mirror that reflect is different. You have to make it differently. So Bohidama said, what I saw in your so-called meditation is the same. You think by sitting like that, without making any noise, you can become enlightened. To me, this is foolish. This is delusion. Means you don't understand what you are doing. It's just like me polishing the glazeware to make it in the mirror. It's impossible. You're wasting your time. 
but then they become curious because after this analogy, they realize he is very wise. Then they ask him, if sitting without making noise cannot make us enlightened, then what can? What is the real practice or cultivation? That's why Bodhidharma start by teaching them the basic essential teaching, the foundation. He said, you have to understand your mind as the basis of starting the meditation. Sing way kanpan. So from the mind, you start. That's why we end up with the Monday mind and the true mind like I explained just now. Then after we understand really, then we realize the Monday mind, if it's active, you cannot be silent, you cannot be aware. The true mind cannot arise. So thought-based meditation cannot lead to the silent mind, the awareness nature within, because that is the only instrument that can bring about the realization of a mind state that is beyond thought, beyond mind. That's why that one is just away, that nature within. When there is no thought, there is no duality, there is no delusion, there is perfect stillness, tranquility, awareness within. Then there is clarity. So everything about that silent mind, the true mind, is the meditative mind. Whereas everything about the other mind is the mundane mind, the thinking mind, the heedless thinking mind that is always lost in thought, agitated, restless, think a lot, worry a lot, verbalize a lot, chatter. The mind that cannot settle down cannot realize peace. So seeing all this, understanding all this, we start. That's why he said, start from the mind, yeah, then understand all this, then the whole teaching become clear. So this cultivation is very different, very unique, very beautiful. Mm. So this six patriarch, like from Sutta, that's why it's not easy to understand, not easy to penetrate. But the Zen teaching find this teaching very interesting. That's why they actually preserve it. Then they put it all over China. Yeah. Especially after the advent of the Sixth Patriarch. Yeah. The whole of the Mahayana teaching become very different. Initially, only the patriarch who received the teaching has the understanding. Then they had to wait till the sixth patriarch <clears throat> to come up with this understanding and profound teaching that were able to bring about like, the rise of the Buddhist teaching again. Yeah. That's why they need causes and conditions. Mm. So the sixth patriarch actually is a uh, very important, uh, what they call a very significant turnaround for Mahayana teachings, for the Buddhist teaching. We call it the revival, uh, the transformation that leads to the, what they call the causes and conditions for the Buddha Dharma to flourish again, to become popular again, to trigger of the potency of his teaching and understanding. That's why even until today, a lot of emphasis is being put on the development of the understanding of the six patriarchs like from Sutta teaching. And this teaching is actually one of the sutra that is put on par with what the Buddha has taught, uh, the six patriarchs teaching. Uh, all the other essential Dhamma are from Sakyamuni Buddha. He taught them uh, all the various sutra uh, discourses. But the sixth patriarch platform sutra was after the Buddha. Uh, and they put it the same status as the sutra. 
proclaimed by the Buddha and all those things. That's why the uniqueness, the beauty, is all reflected there. Okay, David? So hopefully with all this, uh, we can develop the understanding together. Uh, and all calamitas, like you say, it is like a revision uh, to you all. So that revision, if you really go into it, you can develop a lot of understanding. Mm. Okay, tell me. Sadu, 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 no, but no, you. No, no, it is no. very well um explained, and then, uh -huh. and then in also like you know even is um. First of all, I want to thank Varatio to explain yeah. in so detail. Yeah, and then like yeah. in every aspect, even more detail than the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you talk about this um this Dharma. Yes. Mm, yeah. And then it is even like at first, um, then you even talk about like how karma and then come with the from the karma, understanding of karma and until yeah. Until the understanding of um, meditation yeah. and also the everything of the Buddha. Mm, it is uh, very clear. Yeah, yeah. They are all connected. They are all connected. Uh. Yeah, it, it is like <laughs> I'm feeling a lot of joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably and then you know, the way we feel a lot of joy. Yeah, this is the understanding. This is how we unfold from mind. We develop all this understanding. Mm. Then the advice of the Buddha comes. Then from the advice of the Buddha, the meditation comes. Uh, then from there, the whole understanding unfolds. Uh. Yeah, and then feeling very unfortunate um, and gratitude <laughs> yeah, to yeah. able to encounter this. Correct, correct. This sharing, uh, this uh, beautiful Buddha down. Uh, that's why in the year 1971, when I saw the Four Noble Truth, I never turned back. This is it, I realized. No need to search. After searching for about one or two, two years, finally, when I saw the Four Noble Truth, I realized that's it. That's why after that, I went all out in trying to develop the understanding. Of course, after that, I came to the uni. Then I had to finish up my uni education. But in between, I developed uh, understanding of these teachings. That's why I attended a lot of Dhamma classes. Uh, initially, I mainly go to Brickfield Temple, attend the Sunday class, the Friday talk, then whatever Buddhist activity that I came to know through the Buddhist society. Uh, at that time, University of Malaya had the PGA, the Buddhist Society. Uh, then later on, other Buddhist organizations also uh, come out with the program and activity. Of course, we have BMS. Uh, then later on, the set to side and many other. So nowadays, a lot more. Huh? Nowadays, you have even uh, a lot of Buddhist society now. <laughs> Subang Jaya. Uh, and then the client also they have a lot then in fact all the various states I think all Malaysia now they have and of course they are Theroda, Mahayana and the Tibetan side yeah. so all this has flourished all they have like uh, rise uh, over time yeah. and hopefully all this will generate more and more interest in the Buddha Dharma, in the cultivation, and more people can have access to this teaching. Uh, so we also play our part with our Dharma website, with our Dharma activity, and with our sharing. Uh, in fact, our books, our website has actually helped many people too. And like, as Kayamita, we know, a lot of people with First, number through reality problem, uh, especially those who have suffering, misery, uh, and even some with suicidal thought, depression, and all things. 
after learning this teaching, they turn around, they become beautiful. Their life become like normal again. No more like last time. <laughs> Groping in delusion, entangling themselves here and there. <laughs> so finally, when they understand this, they decide for themselves to change the world for the better. And the Buddha Dhamma is very beautiful. The moment you understand and change for the better, your life start improving, transforming, become very big, different. Uh, then you can, like the Buddha said, you can see it for yourself. When you follow his advice, when you start to hold on to the precepts, your life improve, become beautiful. When you start to develop the ability to avoid evil, cultivate goodness, wholesomeness, virtue. Your life change. Then you have more joy, you have more peace. Then when you try to start the meditation, you transform further. That's why all these advice of the Buddha, they are basically the teachings uh, and make living beings actually different. When you really have that what they call the uh, ability to come into contact with this teaching when you have affinity with the triple gem. You will develop a lot of faith, a lot of gratitude, uh, a lot of respect for the Buddha, his teaching. So all this, I think as Kayamitas, as Buddhists, we all have this understanding. That's why this teaching is so beautiful, so wonderful, so meaningful. Mm. So good, eh? Sadhu. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to thank you, but just now when I was raising out the question, I my mind was like, can't really think of how to... Yeah, because you suddenly uh, <laughs> hit it and call you up. Then like you say, you were for a while like blank inside the head. That's so why I try to guide you along. Eh? Uh, yeah. by the and then somehow you get the question, and then uh, yeah. I mean, then like, it is explained uh, well. Thank uh, you so much. So, uh, very uh, good. Sad. Mm. Anything else? Um, that's all from my uh, side. Then you can nominate somebody here. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Oh, nominate somebody. Uh, okay. Uh, right now. Mm. Uh, Maybe Sister um, Alicia. Ah, Alicia, yes. Sadu, Sadu, Sadu. Alicia, are you there? Hi, uh, good evening, brought to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <笑>差不多四五年前对就他我的understanding是不是没有没有没有现在这样了现在我的understanding这个行为根本又不一样对啊不一样了差不多嗯嗯其实嗯其实我就我想学我在新加坡的一个experience啊可以啊差不多
，不然就他是，呃，怎样讲，他很难出来呀、啊，不然就。对对，因为。<笑>你的 awareness nature went in very deep already. Uh, yeah. Then it, it is normally facial they do for you at least two hour or more. Uh, so because of that duration, you can actually go into the very deep state. Uh, even I went to the dentist, uh, <coughs> not really facial. Uh, they can really feel the difference. Yes, when they finish, I aware on this. I straight away. Uh, Came out. Then when they talk to me, I also aware. Then they say, "Oh, you're very good. Huh? Oh, you can even snore and sleep <laughs> inside that. It's actually not snore and sleep. I can relax into it and like let them do what they like. And they 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 find it very easy. Huh? Whatever they tell me to do, they realize there is response. But I was like sleeping. Uh, I was like resting. Uh, completely at rest. Uh, so." When you know how to meditate, all these are possible. And then, of course, when we all go for facial, I seldom go. Yeah? Yeah, but your lady more often, I think. It can be very, very soothing and very conducive for you to relax and develop the meditative state, like you mentioned. Yeah? Because you don't have to do anything. They do everything. To make you relax, uh, they massage you. They do all the facial thing. Of course, sometimes they talk to you. Uh, then you feel very good after that. Uh, my wife always tell me after the session she feel very good. Yeah. So after that, what happened? You find it very difficult to come up. Yeah, but you actually, yeah. uh, when uh, I come out, actually, I was have. 呃，就算你 conscious 啦 ，but then 你就是很难出来 in the sense that 你你 aware 到 surrounding， but then 你就是很像呃，怎样讲啊？就是你很像很难出来，就是你眼睛就睁不开，对，对，就 conscious again take a while， take a while，、yes, take a while to like 哇， yeah, 就啊， yeah. 我讲哇，真的 ，I mean。这个是一个我从来就没有 experience 的东西，是 like very、right. new to me。Yeah. 所以我就呃、uh, 回来之后我就 reflect into it， but then 那个过程 actually 不就是呃、mm. 呃两点七到五点二，差不多很两个多小时。Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you can go in so deep.、Uh. 可是他的那个呃感觉好像一下子罢了。对，对。嗯 Uh, like you are there for a while only. Uh, uh. Yeah. So, well, I was like, uh, but anyway, I was just, I was just, just know how to do it. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 You actually rested for a while already, but actually could be three, four hours already because of the awareness nature. When you are inside there, the hardly any activity, hardly any movement at all, very still. Then everything is just within the way. Then that one for it to become conscious again, it take a while.、Uh, Especially when you know how to relax and go into your nature, then you can be inside that、uh, for quite a while. Then when you come out of it, like you gone through this time, this time maybe it take you longer.、Uh, that's why it's like a non should I? It's okay.、Uh, just let it happen. Yes, it will happen.、Uh, it will happen. And all these are only possible if you know how to develop awareness based meditation. Uh, you know how to go deep into your nature, which is very good, beautiful. I、uh, know after that, <laughs> 那个跟你做飞车的有感觉到什么东西啊？那那那，当我当我出来的时候，我 I I think because 我的 posture 是从来没有动过。Yeah. 我出来之后，我慢慢感觉到我的手好像有一点点。Like, ma, dear, like. Ah, 对对对对。Now you know, like then I understand, yeah, maybe I have been there for so long. Yeah, so, 
That's it. Now, five hours. Almost. Yeah. So, so this this is just a small small one. Experience. Yeah. 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 他一下子好像很难 recall 那个 memory， like 你，哦，他不懂怎样，不懂怎样，啊，那个 your brain has start to become different。Yes, yes, like 你你你 you take a while to 呃，怎样讲 resume 你的 daily work 啊。Correct, correct. 就是，嗯，就他他就说 like 你 take a while to go and recall 你的 memory， 你的东西。就那我讲，原来 retreat 可以有这样的 effect 哦。Yeah, yeah, yeah. 所以我感觉 ，when we go very deep into our nature, when we come out, you know what happened or not? Because most of the time we are at our nature, at the heart there. Then we hardly think already, you know. We hardly go to the brain activity there already, you know. Then our listening, our hearing. Our whatever is at the heart level, no, even the perception through the sense, no, all at the heart area. <clears throat> That's why after that, my brain transform. The Monday mind collapse. Then later on, a lot of things happen. Then this super Monday consciousness, the awareness, the vibration different. Then the brain also become different, no. That's why you also will realize someday. When I do the sharing or whatever, I cannot remember how I come to all this thing. One, then I have to ask you all. Uh, then sometimes when I do the chanting, ah, uh, it's like that moment I chant. Ah, uh, the next moment I cannot recall where I was on that chanting because it's like everything is new. Everything is just that moment. Understand? Ah, uh, but. All this phase, they will go through one. You will go through. You will experience them. Yeah, but nothing to worry on. Nothing to fear because wisdom, no need to remember on. Only knowledge need to be remembered. And knowledge is actually in the memory already. So when you need to retrieve it, you can retrieve one. But you need causes and condition. Yeah, you need to recollect. Sometimes you need to recollect for a while. How did you come to this? Yeah. Then that recollection can actually bring forth the thing because your awareness. When you go through it with awareness, you can actually recollect through the memory, because the awareness actually during that time you are aware is is part of your awareness nature's movement. That's why you can recollect. Then I can know what happened. Then from there I can connect back. Uh, but Moment to moment, instant to to instant, means every moment of activity, the brain has become different. It's it's not like normal people. Wow, your thinking all like nonstop one, ah, uh, like 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 that 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 very active thinking. It cannot already. The the thought like they they are not there at all, or most of them are not connected one. Yeah, and everyone is new because your awareness nature is there. It's very fresh. So this phase is very normal. You will go through. You cannot recall. Never mind. Ah,、uh, then sometimes it like your your memory is like affected. It's not affected. It because now you are more towards the awareness side. You use more of your nature to live life. You are no longer like before. So this phase let it go through.、Uh, it will come to pass. Then you will become more and more beautiful. The awareness will transform more and more. Your brain activity will transform more and more. Because when we can go in the our wisdom energy, the pure energy from our nature, they will trigger off a type of vibration which is very pure, very very fine and very pure. And this one will cause our mundane mind later on. Your case also will happen to slowly, slowly. Collapse, yeah. The brain activity that in front of your brain there and inside your brain, a lot of thing will happen to you. You will come to know, ah,、uh, later on. So this is 
normal, beautiful part of the cultivation. <laughs> But, yeah, really. Yeah, I I find it so amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, very amazing. Huh? Yeah, because um, because now, like most of the time, is very very close. I I am very close. 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 I am That's why it's very different. That type of living is hateful living, and you become very different. That's why people cannot understand us. Huh? We we find thinking very difficult already. You know, like <laughs> we we seldom think, really, hardly think. Really. Yeah, when we want to interact with people, communicate with people, we can still talk. We can still interact, comment, but it's direct from the heart or no? From the understanding come out or no? It's not through memory. Huh? Yeah. Then of course sometimes the words we may not recall because it's not from memory anymore. Then sometimes I have to ask around what what is that word and all that. Because the the thing the normally can remember one, uh, it is like missing them. Uh, uh, but it's not to say it's not in the memory. It's in the memory. It's because of the transformation. The awareness nature has become different. We. Are using more and more awareness nature until we are fully at the heart area. Uh, when we are fully at the heart area, then you become different. That's why it took me thirty over years uh, to go through all this. That's why I can share what you all go through uh, while you are going through the cultivation of awareness based meditation. It because my nature since nineteen eighty nine uh, has transformed. It's eighty nine. Now it's already ninety nine, two o nine, two one nine. Thirty three years, thirty three years of transformation. So this one, this one, people cannot understand what what my nature went through. Yeah, and for it to connect in nineteen eighty nine at the age of thirty five is considered very early to detect the gateway to go in. To go through all this, and most people, according to my last guide, people who can do this, most of them they only get it at the age of eighty. Yeah. Yeah. They already eighty, not much time left really. So for us, like your case, Alicia, you you got it maybe fifty something. We still consider very early. Uh, but of course, my case, I was lucky where I met my last guy when I was ready, and I developed the understanding, and straight away, I detected my gateway. I said ten to fifteen years. Otherwise, I also had to wait till about fifty, fifty years old, uh, for me to detect. If on my own, I look for it, I think at least fifty years old before I can detect it. Uh, so all this meant to be. For me, there's like among Kayamitas, quite a number has this ability to connect early. Then in future, when we all come, you all come, you will become different again. Yeah. With, with all this understanding, the Bodhisattva vow and the transformation. So in future, when you come, all this will come back to you and you will connect and inherit back your spiritual understanding. To have all this understanding, that's why this life, you all who have the ability must stabilize all this awareness based meditation, the transformation, until you become very stable, very clear. If this life you can do that, then with your vow, your aspiration, the Buddhist vow, then when you come again, you can actually connect back to have this understanding very fast, very fast. And then you become very different. Your meditative understanding become very different. Uh, like this line when I come. In fact, after it denied, I became very different. Uh, so all these are the causes and conditions, and you unfold. Mm. That's why I don't worry. Huh? Uh, normal, normal. Uh, uh, 
，就呃我明白，所以我我没有任何的 any 呃、uh, what you call doubt or anything because、啊啊、你的买卖就是知道，嗯嗯，所以嗯 ，Bradio 很感恩，因为 Bradio 的 guide 呃，我其实我真的是很感恩，因为能够走到这边，只是。我从来没有想过的啦，吼，不然就呀呀呀呀！你所以因为时间的关系，呃，我就要 end 我的 sharing， 感恩就感恩大家，嗯、感恩 Demi 的 sharing， 阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛呀 ，OK good， so 我们改天再给你 continue， 沙<笑>掉沙掉沙掉 ，OK let us rejoice with the good sharing 啊 ，of Demi and 呃、uh, Alicia。Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, we will do the sharing of Mary, transfer Mary, then the closing puja. Akasata cya pumata deva naga mahindika punyang tang anumoditwa cirang rakan tulu kasa sana. Eta wata cahmehi sampadan punya sampadan sabi dewa anuwa dan tu sabi sampati sidia idang menya tinang ko tu sukita hon tu nya tayo idang menya tinang ko tu sukita hon tu nya tayo idang menya tinang ko tu Sukita hon tunya tayo, Deo wa satu kali na, Sa sa sampati hitu cya, Vito bawa tu loko cya, Raja bawa tu dami ko, Ipina punyang kami na, Mami bala samagamo, Satang samagamo hotu, Yawa nivana patiya, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay, you all can now pay respect mindfully to Lord Buddha, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, and all the worthy ones. Then we will end the whole session. Sadhu, thank you for the participation. Sadhu.